just to give everyone a little bit of context, we are talking here with Thomas Amos from Design Box. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hi. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Thomas is uh, one of our coaches in the UK. And we were nerding out in Mavcon in, in Virginia last year, in October, about growth plans and how you're managing growth plans in Notion. And we thought it would be good to share uh, your process here with our audience. And so what you've done is you've basically built a template yep. that people can use to manage growth plans in Notion. Now, I haven't seen this, and I was just saying off camera, I like discovering things at the same time as the audience. So this is new to me. Just before we dive into like what you've done here, which looks very pretty, by the way, <laughs> um, let's. can you just explain in your words, what is a, what the hell is a growth plan? Um, so for us... It is a combination of services uh, specifically for uh, a client to grow. So um, just as an example, um, we used to do single services such as just SEO, but that can be a little bit boring and actually it might not be what that client needs. They might need a combination of strategies. They might need more than one thing. So... um, We started to build in a combination of strategies so that um, you become that all-in-one solution for your client. Pretty much what you've said before, to be the most helpful person in the room. Um, We want to be that that person for our clients and um, allows us to do more and earn more from our clients too. So, um, Mm. yeah. In a nutshell. I, like, I, like, I, like, I like the distinction. It allows you to earn more from your clients because you're doing more for your clients. You're adding more value, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so one, like the, the classic example that I think about is you, you launch a website. In the first three months after you launch a website, what's the number one question that clients come back to you with in that first 90 days after they launch a website? Well, uh, with us, we've we normally already got a plan. So for us, right, kind of exactly, a, yeah, a week or two before, we generally have already got a marketing plan of what's happening next. Um, mm-hmm. I would say prior to this, um, prior to us doing growth plans, I'd say two months after, people would start to say, "I don't think my website's working," or mm-hmm. "I don't know how to do this," or um, or it just all the excitement's gone, like. All of the yep. buzz from launching your website is just gone and they've either lost faith in what their website is or mm-hmm. they've moved on to other other interesting things. Um, mm-hmm. So our, our goal with the growth plans is to keep that excitement there but also keep the relationship going and moving forwards. Mm-hmm. Nothing worse than someone spending a load of money for a new website and then being left to their own devices to try and make that successful so yeah and they're like <clears throat> how come we're not ranking on google and how come we're not getting any email addresses off the website and should we be doing email marketing and should we be doing ads and how come my competitors are crushing on instagram and i don't even know how that works and yeah they they get overwhelmed and confused because the, the a lot of people think that the website is going to solve the problem but it's really just the beginning of the journey isn't it yeah exactly that and if if they're not doing anything, then it then feels like their their website is to blame for them failing in success. When actually, yeah, they've just bought a stack of leaflets and they haven't delivered them. So they've, yeah, you know, they've oh. they've bought the tool and not Kite. used it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's it's really about moving with the client and and trying to help them grow. So a combination of like consulting advice and some done for you services. Um, it's, you know, it's not a care plan. It's a growth plan. Yeah. We're helping our clients achieve their goals. Um, then the challenge becomes, well, okay, I have a regular call with my client. How do I know what we're doing? How do I know what we're working on? You kind of manage all this stuff in like Asana or ClickUp or whatever you use, but you've gone all in on notion for building like a dashboard for each client. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and I, I know I've seen a lot of people in this industry try and build build dashboards and portals and whatever. Um, I just found this was really easy because there was always a tool there that didn't do the thing that you wanted to do, and sometimes you just needed an easy solution to put some text in or add a filing, and you 
it's just it's just easy if I'm honest. Yeah, like a really fancy Google Doc, right? With yeah. more, with like more functionality. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so walk us through it. What? How does it? How does it work? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm actually going to scroll down and show you the bottom part first. Uh, believe it or not, that's actually um, something that we would achieve through paid discovery. And then mm-hmm. I'll show you through the top. It's just so that it becomes a little bit familiar. But the first thing that happens when, when you come here, I'll give you a quick preview to one of our clients that's already got one. So we just have a relative image at the top. Uh, we have their logo, their name, the account manager. Um, this is really important as well, is we actually have a an update date. So it notifies the member of staff that is managing the client to update the, the growth plan. Um, so it's just looking at roadmap ideas, maybe adjusting 12 month strategy, depending on the client. So it just alerts them to, Hey, you need to update this on this date, which is cool. Um, list out what services the client's got, their web address, contact details and what plan they're on. Love it. Yeah. Going back to this, this template, uh, we've got like a bit of a quick overview just to, to navigate them to any of the details they need to see. And I'm just going to go down to this bottom half here, which is discovering <clears throat> goals. Now, this is something that you would do when you're building a digital roadmap for a client. And just as an overview, you would have the goals that you want to achieve at this point. So this is just kind of without putting the whole thing there. We just kind of cover the main the main goals. Mm-hmm. Um I've got a little link here to the business overview. So this is quite actually helpful for the team, just so that if someone else comes in and doesn't quite know this client, uh, there'll be a bit of a business overview. And I've actually put the template in here for for the paid discovery workbook. So if you haven't got that, you can just copy that and and edit it for this client. Um, Generally, we just put a snapshot there. As long as they can read it, we just put a quick snapshot there. Don't need to copy and paste loads of details. Perfect. For those, just a little bit of context. For those that don't know, paid discovery is if you're watching this, by the way, and you're not one of our clients, what the hell is wrong with you? Please get on board and let us help you get this set up in your business. Uh, but paid discovery is the first engagement with a client where we work out the strategy. We get paid to work out the strategy with them and we, you end up with this beautiful strategy document and this is what Thomas is referring to. If you are a paid discovery client, you know exactly what we're talking about and if you're a customer of the growth plan method, you will have everything we're talking about here as a bonus in the growth plan method uh, that Thomas is giving us. So cool. continue, please, Mr. Amos. No worries. Um, so further down, again, just without putting the whole strategy there, we just put some important KPIs on whatever we've planned through the digital roadmap. And again, that's to help the team and just help the client remember what we've laid out. Then um, I've put a copy of the digital strategy roadmap template So if you haven't already created one, you can simply copy that, make it your own and and do what you need to do. So again, this is really important to have in there just in case the client's forgotten what you said three months ago, six months ago, and it's just in there so that anyone can just quickly go back through um, what needs to be done. Um, Lastly, I've got deliverables and assets. So all of our clients, now you might do this a different way, so you might do this in Dropbox or or whatever it is you use. Um, We use Google Drive. Um, So we have a, and again, I've made this as a template, so anyone can copy this folder. Um, Let me just see if I can open this up um, in another screen. So I, I have a template within our company of how we structure our files for a client. And so there's like a master file, uh, folder, sorry, uh, where this is where anything is finalized. So uh, as I can imagine with a lot of designers, there's there's logo design final, logo design final, final, and logo design final, final, final. This is where you put and then the logo final logo file. design and then logo design use this one and delete the others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the client master area is all the stuff that is finalized, not the working in progress stuff. That's just the stuff that you know signed off um i put any client content in there documents reports um and as the guys are working always use putting things in the same places it's just a really nice 
organized structure that we use. And again, you can just copy this folder if you're using Google Drive to, to map out all the information you need for your client. Um, Love it. But again, yeah, um, you could password protect this. You could share this, obviously, for different for different reasons. You might want to um, only add their email for security, etc. But just for this example, I've just put view only, so everyone can can view this. Um, but yeah, it just makes everything nice and easy to access. And so, for those that don't, for those that aren't familiar with Notion, this is literally just a like a Google Drive widget that you've added to Notion, yeah, that pulls in the contents of a particular folder. Yeah, yeah. So let me just give you a quick preview. So it's as easy as this. So I just come over and am I in the folder? Yes. So I just come over, I share, copy the link, mm-hmm. I go straight back into Notion, and I paste the link and say create embed. And oh wow! Look there at we that. go. So good. Oh, that's great. But yeah, so um, it's not complicating. And I think that's the important thing: is it doesn't need to be complicated. Yep. So yeah, so they're they're the core bits of information you need when you start. Um, sounds a little great. bit backwards because we've got to go down to go through <laughs> it all. But um, it just allows. But a- you've just got that. You've just got that stuff at the bottom of their one. Their kind of one page dashboard. You've got that stuff at the bottom because that's the. That's what we learned through paid discovery. That's what the clients agreed to. That's what we're, the team is working on. So that's kind of our one source of truth, right? That is, yeah. this is what we're working on here. So as ideas come up and scope creep starts to happen, we can just bring the client back and say, hey, this is what we're working on because this is what we agreed to. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. And cool. Um, just to reconfirm that down the right hand side, I don't go into all of the technicals because this would be a really long, complex sidebar. Um, mm-hmm. But we just outline the services that we're providing and That's great. the end price. So if you know they want to know what they're getting for what they're paying, it's there. And if they actually want to go further down, it's broken down for them. Um, Love so, it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> do have more to show. Um, so I have just created a – yeah, there we go. I've created a template in uh, Google Sheets of an example of what you could do for a growth plan. Now, there's loads of different ways you can do growth plans. I won't go into it too much detail. You could even just do a retainer and provide one service. You don't have to do a combination of services. Um, it's just an example of how we do as. So um, it's there. Love it. And yeah, you can copy This is it awesome. And so, for, so for those of you who have done the growth plan method, uh, I mentioned in there one of the first things you should do is list out all of the ways that you can help your client and then kind of adopt the growth hacking methodology and kind of help them figure out what to do next. I mean, really for me, that's the benefit of a growth plan is you're helping your client figure out what they should do next, work on the next most important thing to move towards their goals. So this is like a brain dump of like all of the stuff that you could do. And as Thomas said, you don't have to add services into your growth plan to make it more valuable, but these are the, some of the things that you could explore and some of the ways that you could continue to help your client. Exactly. Yeah. And I kind of feel that sometimes it's important to showcase your pricing, even if you're just a retainer and your growth plan is a retainer of hours, just so that, you know, if a client is maybe a little bit unsatisfied because they're not getting enough, you can go back to this or they can go back to this and that they can see that they potentially might need to pay you more to do more. So it's mm-hmm. it's keeping that door open for potential more income. Um, Love it. So... I'm going to go through the 12-month uh, digital marketing strategy first. I know it's covered in the growth plan course. Just to note, this is very similar to your template, Troy, with ClickUp. And if you prefer to use ClickUp, I've copied Troy's template and link in there. So you can copy that and paste that in. Um, so what I would say is if ClickUp is your where your business is managed, then just embed the template in here. You don't have mm-hmm. to manage it in two different places because sometimes that adds more work than you need to do. So if it's easier yep. for you to manage the project in ClickUp, just embed the link in here and it will do a preview. The only reason this hasn't done a preview is because this is sharing you the template link and it will look very similar to what's above. Because um, we don't use ClickUp, I, 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 I don't use that. So completely up to you, Perfect. whatever works for you. What do you, just curious, what do you use for project management? Do you use Notion, do you? We actually use something called Productive. 
uh, productive. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, and um, we just find that for time management, it's really, really accurate, which is good for me to work out my profit and mm -hmm. and, and uh, productivity. So, yeah, but they, they all do the same thing. It. It's just what, what you prefer. Yep. Cool. So, um, yes, this is very similar to what you've covered, Troy, and 12-month plan. You've got the bench column, things that you're looking at implementing, and then you've got your, your strategy moving forwards. Now, when I've got a growth plan that's providing loads of different services, just to reinforce what we're doing, I separate sometimes the points of different services so that I don't go into high detail, just, you know, we're doing the Google Ads January. Sometimes we might have a campaign for Google Ads, so we might just add a bit more information on that when we go back through that with the client, and that just kind of reconfirms what we're doing. But you don't need to overcomplicate it because it's a waste of time. It's just if you need to add any notes on what you're trying to achieve, just put that for that month and your team know what you're doing and your client knows what you're doing too. Love it. And so this is this is just, again, we, we ran a uh, – I did a – I recorded a, a training with Simon Kelly last week where he was showing how – he kind of does something similar, but he kind of does it back like in reverse order. He just like writes up the digital marketing strategy in a Google Doc and then embeds that in ClickUp, right? So he manages everything in ClickUp. So, so the, the Kanban board, the visual Kanban board is like a visual roadmap so the client can see what's coming up in the future months, right? But the strategy document that we give them at the end of pay discovery is what they've agreed to. So it's the same information. It's just laid out in a different way. Here's the strategy document that they've signed. That's what they've agreed to. And now here it is visually laid out. Here's what we're going to do month in, month out. Yeah, exactly that. And it, to be honest, it saves a lot of um, questions coming back. So, you know, when are my Facebook ads going to be set up? Um, when are my first ads going to be live? Or if there's an extra update, for example, we use high level. So, you know, there might be... When is this? When are you implementing the new review system into a high level? It's it's going to be laid out so they can see expectations on on timelines as well. So one of the things I get my guys to do, and it's another area that we look at, is roadmap and ideas. And it's it's a new thing that we do, and we've um, been targeting the guys that manage each client um, to bring up areas of improvement. So especially when we're doing website care plans, if you see something very obvious that could be better or that doesn't work as it should, or maybe we've just done a new website and you think that's a great idea for this new client, this is where we brain dump all of these, all of these ideas. So when we next have a meeting with a client, although we might have a very clear roadmap, you know, we're being up, front with new things that we can do rather than just saying here's 12 months we're not going to talk about anything else we could also say do you know what um no we haven't spoke about speed optimization but now for whatever reason maybe the clients added a load of plugins and this wasn't a problem two months ago um we need to do a bit of optimization additionally to get you back to where you were and this may be the reason why so the great thing here is my team just fill up loads of ideas um, and it always adds additional uh, revenue for the business. So the client gets quite used to what they're paying in the growth plan. But if, you know, we've got a great idea for improving the blog, um, here's a bit of an example here. Um, we'll say, look, we can do all this to improve your blog so that we're doing all these blog posts, but it looks very ugly. Maybe if we had some filtering now that you've added loads of blog posts so it's easy for customers to see the articles and the categories that they need to and add an actual question-based search, it, it won't be so ugly anymore. So we will do that and there's some additional columns in here, setup costs, if there's monthly costs, maybe there's a subscription model or something, estimated time. We try and fill out all of this so that when we have the meeting, it's all laid out and... Uh, if the client approves, we add it to that benchmark in the uh, in the roadmap. So um, yeah, it's just mm. it's just how we try to earn more revenue from our clients and actually help the client yeah. fix problems that they might even they might not even know exist. And you know, one of the thi I think our job as consultants, whether you're comfortable with that word or not, it's really kind of what we're doing is 
is identifying, hey, what we've seen work in other clients and what we've seen work in other industries is this. We think we should apply it here and this is the expected outcome that we, you know, will will achieve. And this is what clients are paying us for is to come up with these ideas and solve problems that they don't even know exist or to help them kind of turn the headlights on and look around corners into the future and go, hey, we need to do this now so that in three months' time, X, Y, Z. And I think that's the value that we bring to clients, not just pushing pixels and cutting code, right? Yeah, exactly that. And the the other problem we had when we were just providing, say, just SEO is, you know, it's kind of um, – it's a lack. I feel like it's a lack of care and a lack of passion. You know, if you see something that's really wrong, you know, why not? Why not? It's not selling it. It's just telling the client, "Hey, we can make an improvement," and uh, you know, <laughs> if it means more money, then do it. Um, yeah. You know. So. Um, so yeah. So that's what we do with that. I will say with roadmap and ideas, we don't get clients to add that because that becomes an absolute mess from experience. Totally. We just, if we have a discussion, we might leave some notes in there if we think that's a good idea, but we won't let them update that uh, just historically. It then messes things up. Um, so, yeah, um, there's that. So, um, moving forwards, um, what we like to do is we have our own kind of audit system and everyone else might do their SEO in a different way to what we do or the Google ads, etc. Um, so we like to, if we've done an audit for whatever it is that we're improving, we like to also put this in here just so that the client can reflect. Um, a great example of this is um, my web audit. Um, if we've done a website audit, uh, we like to just go back over and leave that in there. And there's a bit of an example of my web my, my web audit. And it just shows mm-hmm. the client the opportunities visually of where they can improve their status and uh, what needs to be done to to, to move forwards. So, um, so I lost my place again. So yeah, so we just add this there. It's a nice quick uh, place to view that and um, yeah, we try to do that with each service. So um, just as a, a working example, we have an e-commerce client that's on a growth plan here. And we do a conversion rate um, optimization audit as part of the service we do with growth plans. We have X amount of hours per month that we try to improve the conversion rate on their shop. So we've created an audit worksheet and we go through on priority what things will help the shop um, some scenarios it's not relevant some scenarios are more important but we always look for the you know the hanging fruit we always look for the easy quick wins first and then we work our way down based on cost and and time and um, mm-hmm. and we add little examples to how we could add that in the website if we've done it before and this can this can grow mm. um, but having That's that conversation, great. It, it makes it more visual too. Great. This is, I mean, again, for those of you who have done the growth plan method, this is exactly what I'm talking about with the growth hacking methodology. We talk about the ICE score, the impact, confidence, and ease. You've got the ICP here, impact, cost, priority, kind of gives you an, an indication of what you should work on next. Your example column is what I call the, the gold standard. So here's the gold standard of where we've done this or where someone else has done this and this is what we're aiming for. And this gives you a really good place to start a conversation with a client each month to help them figure out what to do next and also show them what's possible and show them how you can, you know, all the different ways that you can help them. This is great. Yeah. So we try to do this with each service. It just makes it uh, a bit more visual for the client and it makes it Mm -hmm. a lot easier for anyone running a meeting. All we tend to do is we'll have an agenda in the meeting and we'll run back through the portal to touch base on, you know, what we're doing, where the progress is and what we're doing next. Um, so each of these each of these links here is, a, is essentially a page in a database, right? And the way that Notion does this is you've got a database, you're showing it in gallery view or grid view, and each of these is a, basically a sub page which outlines how email marketing works and how – is it generic or is it client-specific? Like if it, this e- e-commerce CRO audit – is this specifically for this client or is that just a generic page that would be in every client portal? Um, it's becoming more and more generic in the sense that 
where we've created some really comprehensive audits now. It applies to pretty much, for example, that e-commerce CRO audit, we've actually expanded from that heavily. And now we can pretty much chuck it to any e-commerce client. So um, it's it's unique for each one where we tick it off and say done and, and approved and things like that. Got it. But um, it's now a framework for ourselves to, to work through. Um, rather than having to create a thousand <laughs> things of what we can do because mm. that will take forever. So, um, yep. Yep. yeah, it's work in progress. I mean, you, you just look at this and say, okay, SEO marketing, CRO, web audits, email marketing. You there With with email marketing, for example, right, you, there's, you could write yourself nine months' worth of work just by going through your email marketing strategy, right? How do we do lead capture? How do we do... Uh, onboarding new email subscribers? How do we do nurture campaigns? How do we do cart abandon? How do we do database reactivation? There's, you know, how do we report on this stuff? How do we optimize it? How do we split test once we've got enough volume? Uh, how do we track where the traffic's coming from and assign it to UTM parameters so we know where to invest out? I mean, this this never ending, right? Yeah. But if you don't tell the client what's possible and what you're capable of, they'll never know. So I really like, this is for me is like, walking into, you know, a hardware store and saying, I don't know what tools I need, but I want to have a look around because I'm sure there's ways that I can improve what I'm doing at home, but I don't know what I don't know. So I want to talk to the experts and see what's possible. Yeah. Yeah. We actually had a conversation yesterday with a client. Um, We had an email marketing audit and uh, they said to us, hey, we've got abandoned cart. And we were like, okay, great. Looked at it. It was just a hey, you left these items in your cart. It was really boring. Um, so went through our audit, and our audit had a five-stage abandoned cart automation. It was, you know, after an hour, it said, hey, you've left these. And it was a really nice, fun way of saying, hey, you've leaf- left these. Please don't let them go. And then 12 hours later, it was like it offered a 10% discount so that they could buy And it said, this discount is only going to be applied for 24 hours. 23 hours later, it's saying, hey, this discount is going to end. Don't leave these items in your cart now. So, And and we had a continued follow-up from that uh, with offers and other things that may be relatively good. So they kind of looked at that. And although they thought, okay, we've got abandoned cart, when they looked at the strategy, they were like, oh, there's so much more we could mm-hmm. we could do from that even from upselling um yep so yeah it's just it's just having that conversation really yeah and sh- and having the conversation based on what you know works with other clients and what you've seen work in other industries and having the conversation based on what you know is possible that they don't and i think one of the things that we forget as digital marketers is because we spend most of our life hanging out in groups with other digital marketers, we think that everyone on the planet knows how to do what we do, right? We don't think it's anything special, but you forget 99.999% of the people on the planet have no idea how this stuff works because they're busy running their business. I have no idea how, you know, a luxury home builder chooses the right concrete for the right thermal mass foundation for an energy efficient home. I, that, I have no idea how that works. And so... I'm learning about his business model and he has no idea that you can make a video so that when people book in for a sales meeting, they watch the video before they turn up, which means they've already kind of drunk the Kool-Aid on your methodology. So when they turn up for a sales call, you're not doing the same 45 minute presentation over and over again. When I explained that, he thought I invented computers. He's like, you're a genius. How does this work? I'm like, dude, this is so basic in my world, but he's spending his life laying concrete foundations on empty blocks of land. So he's got no idea how the internet works, you know what I mean? Because he doesn't spend the same amount of time that we do. So I think we undervalue what we bring to clients because we it's so familiar and I think that kind of familiarity breeds a, a sort of an unappreciation, like an underappreciation of what it is we do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so what I will say with with some of these uh, strategies. I've added a couple of examples. Uh, one of the things that I tend to say with regards to email automation, Facebook ads, Google ads, with some of our clients, we actually integrate Whimsical as well because it adds again another mm-hmm. visual aid to show them mm-hmm. literally how it's going to work from from mm-hmm. from A to B. Um, 
you don't have to use Whimsical. We've got like a Google uh, Google slide, sorry, a Google um, Draw template you can add in. Mm-hmm. And we've just put in some examples there and you can show a little diagram. Um, I do mm-hmm. prefer Whimsical. But um, again, it's just another visual aid so that the client can actually see that may not understand all the terminology. Right, okay, so yep. they're going to click the ad and this is how they're going to become my lead and, and, and convert as a customer. Um, which I think is quite helpful. Um, Love it. Right. So uh, moving forwards, uh, I I imagine a lot of people are providing care plans. And if they aren't, I always suggest to have care plans. It's a nice small income to make sure that you're looking after the the website. Uh, One of the things that we do, and we we purposely make this uh, low effort, is we have a Zapier in Productive, but we had it in ClickUp before. And all that did was just sent over in Airtable what the team had done for that particular client. And there's just an example there. Um, if you could do that, super cool. It's, it's actually fairly easy to do. Um, but there's just an example there. You don't have to have this there if you're not providing the service. Um, but this is something that we do. Um, it doesn't require anyone to update it, just that when the guys are doing monthly web maintenance, you can see there, it's just recorded. But there might be some times when there's a um, security vulnerability or a, a page that needs an update or whatever it is, and it'll all be recorded there so the client can just see the support updates that have been provided. Now, the support updates aren't improvements. They're not you know, new features, new functions. These are fixes. And, and client support, and it's just recorded. Maintenance, there, yep. So they can see the value of what they're getting. Love it. One of the new things that we've implemented is uh, past meetings. So we use something called Fathom uh, AI for our meetings. And when it's finished the meeting, it has a complete summary that I can copy and paste in Notion with a link to the whole recording. So um, just as an example, I've actually made a Notion template for this. So all you have to do is you go over to here, you click Add New Meeting. It has this templated Hmm. meeting overview. You can put a little title as to what the meeting was. And if Mm -hmm. you open it up, um, I've I've created a template here for you to fill out. Now, if you use fathom.i... AI, um, you just need to paste in the summary and you're done. But if you don't, you don't need that. You can just type this in as you go and it's all there for the next person to see. Love it. I think it might be fathom.video that you're referring to. It could well be. It's it's great. Yeah. Um, There's a a bunch of them on the market. Um, Airgram just merged with Notter, which is the one that we use. Uh, so we're having to learn Notter now. But yeah, there's a bunch of these, you know, assembly, fireflies, fathom uh, that basically record your Zoom calls, transcribe them, and then write up a summary for you. Yeah, yeah. We used to use fireflies before as well. And that, yeah, that, to be honest, they're all super easy to use. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, that's the only thing that I beg my guys to do now is please paste in. Paste in totally. the, the recording so that we we know yeah. what's been said in the meeting. So yeah, um, how, how does that how does that add new meeting button insert a template? Is that a Notion function? It is a it? Notion function. Yeah. So there's there's a, there's an option there for button, and then you can create like a template in here. So what this does is it inserts a block, and then I've just created a template inside of that block of how I want it laid out. Um, and it, it, it's, it's nice in a way that it's given you agenda before you've even started the meeting. So, you know, you, you know what you're going to be talking about and, and you're not going to divert onto something that's not relevant. That's great. So um, I think this is... Oh, no, before I end, um, one thing that we do... Now, not everyone, I'm, I'm sure not everyone would do this. Um, all of our client reports are done through Looker Studio. Um, Mm -hmm. so for our clients, we do send them a monthly report and I encourage a monthly report because that, Mm -hmm. you know, it will have more detail and it's going to have it all laid out. And it's something that I recommend on a monthly basis that your team or yourself go through with a client to translate that data. It's really important. Otherwise that report means nothing. Um, Mm -hmm. but Just as an extra feature, you can either add in your reports in in here, so there's a record, 
For us, we're a bit lazy. We have Looker Studio and it's live. So uh, we have our own template and it's in here. So if the client ever wants to see their analytics, they can just click through and it will literally show them all their analytics and they can go through each page. Um, but like I say, this is taking us a while to get to this point. But um, but yeah, it's just another way that might inspire others to, to, to manage their reports. We used to use uh, agency analytics, which is fantastic. It, mm-hmm. For us, it was another blocker because they had to log into it. So that's why that's why we put it in there. So it's just easily accessible and they haven't got to go somewhere else to get <clears> the information. So yeah. got it. I mean, it, it also um, agency analytics I love, but also it gets expensive at scale. Yeah, uh, and also I'm just checking the integrations page now. Does not integrate with Notion. No. Uh, so you couldn't bring, which is unfortunate, it would be great if you could just embed the uh, agency analytics reports, the live reports straight into Notion, but um, not to be. But you've obviously spent the wor- the effort and the work and the time to get Looker Studio like this. That takes a lot of time yeah. uh, to do that. And so um, but is, uh, in the long run is cheaper and integrates with with Notion, so that's the benefit there. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do that again. If you're using other tools, you can just put the PDF in there. Some of the PDFs, you can make them viewable anyway, which mm-hmm. is just as good. So, you know, and then just add them as you go. And I think that's the joy of a Notion. You know, you can tweak this around what suits you. You know, you might not provide half of these services, so you could just go in and, you know, just re- delete them, um, you know, if it's not relevant. And if you need to update and tweak it you can do it how it works for you so that, yeah, that's that's, that's great why we, that's what we're doing here so um, one thing to add is um, with this template here I have um, added all of the images in Canva so you can just simply add your own branding and then paste it into your own framework so there's no guessing of what sizes you need to do and um, again we've put some wording in there that kind of explains what each section is Um, but um, as you'll see with my own one um, if I go back um, I've added my own little branding being design box we've got little boxes and our own our own color so you can kind of make it your own and and showcase that to your clients awesome love it dude you're like my favorite nerd at the moment (laughs) 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 and I'm and I mean that with all the love and the yeah. most respect. You've spent so much time on this, organising it. It's just awesome. I appreciate you so much. It's all right. No worries. No worries. No worries at all. This is awesome. And so how do people get this? Is it just a link that they – how do they get this into Notion? So um, I will create a shareable template link. And then um, when we hand that over to you, there will be an option in the top right where it will basically say make a copy. And you click mm-hmm. make a copy, very much like a ClickUp template. You'll make a copy mm-hmm. and it will ask you where it wants to go inside your Notion account. Obviously, Got if it. you don't have a Notion account, create one and then uh, mm-hmm. and then it will go into your account. Beautiful. So, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, the links to the Canva templates and all that kind of stuff, we'll put all of that uh, yeah. wherever you're – so wherever you're, if you're watching this video and you are a growth plan method customer, you get access to all of this. If you're in Recurring Revenue Accelerator or you're in Mavericks Club, you get access to all of this, which is amazing. If you're watching this video on YouTube or wherever we decide to publish it, you may not get access to all of the templates because obviously we keep some of that stuff just for our paying clients. But you can have a look at what Thomas has done here and model it and whatever we don't give you, you can create yourself. Uh, obviously, if you're in one of our programs, just reach out to your coach or your navigator and we'll make sure that we get this stuff set up for you. Dude, this is amazing. It's late in the UK. What time is it where you are? Uh, nearly 10 o'clock. So, uh, nearly 10 p.m. Well, not too bad. I appreciate you so much jumping on uh, and sharing this with us. Is there anything we've missed? We've covered everything? I think, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it, Joy. That's great, dude. It's amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. And uh, I, I'm going to actually set this up in my notion and start playing with it because I think that one of the things that we're exploring at the moment is how do we, when we coach – Mavericks and particularly Mavericks, how do we keep everything organized in one page for each Maverick? And I actually, we've been playing with a couple of options, but I actually, and we already use Notion, so I actually think we might be able to repurpose this for Mavericks and go, right, so here's your revenue growth plan, here's your flight plan, 
Here's your all your billing details. Here's the curriculum that you're working on at the moment. Here are your meeting summaries. I think we might be able to build something like this for Mavericks in Notion. It'd be super cool. That sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah. To it. In a very nerdy kind of way. Yeah. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thomas Amos from Designbox, thank you very much. You are our UK coach for Mavericks Club and uh, look forward to hanging out again at one of our live events soon. No worries. See you soon. Thanks, brother.